Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. We got Frank DeSoma here, POF, Patriot Ordnance Factory here. I know there's lots of people like shouting you out right now. Um, I'll try to take a couple of things here. I'm trying to like do this in some kind of order. Um, so you started the you started POF in 2002, I think you said. Yep, in 2002 we incorporated. Okay. In 2004 we were at the Shot Show and then we had our first piston driven um, AR-15. Mm-hmm. So I'll give you some insight in that. We were making handguards prior to, but in the interim I was selling handguards because we were still working on the piston gun mm-hmm. in the background. Mm-hmm. Um, I received a letter from Colt, like many other manufacturers did, about trademarks and trade names. So if you look at my first rail, it was called a P4. Okay. He said I named it a P4 because I couldn't call it an M4 handguard, right? And Mm -hmm. the Picatinny rails were new, just coming out, and we had a four-sided Picatinny rail. Um, But we couldn't call it a M4, right, an M4 handguard, because then I would have Colt. And I'm a new company starting out in my garage. Yeah, you don't want to get sued. You don't want to get sued. Yeah, I was going to ask you, where did you start out? Did you get, like I was going to say, did you get a big factory, or did you start in the garage? You started in the garage. <laughs> so let okay. me tell you, when I was 21, I, you know, through the years, I purchased rental homes mm-hmm. from HUD. I rebuilt them and sold them. And I finally sold my last, rental home that I had and I asked my wife at that time I said hey can I take 25 grand of it and try something and she thought I was just going to piss it away but of course she said yes I mean we dealt with a rental house for decades and it was a pain in the ass so Mm -hmm. she said go you know go knock yourself out so I used that money and we worked out of our garage and I played with this I didn't know but that's the greatness of America the greatness of America The most exciting thing is our individual right of choice. We can fail or we can succeed. Mm-hmm. Even I look at President Trump. He didn't he didn't make everything turn into gold. He's mm-hmm. failed several times too. Yeah, we all but, do. We all fail. I mean, the thing is getting up and, and trying going for it again and again and again. Bingo. Yeah. And that's the greatness of America and mm-hmm. our freedoms and liberties. We have the opportunity to even try. Mm-hmm. So, that you know Mm -hmm. and we have also the blessings of other americans like you and i Mm -hmm. that gave us opportunities and said hey what's this idiot frank doing frank to someone i'll try this thing out (laughs) yeah you know they gave us an opportunity that's how we exist we exist because the early people that looked at what we were doing were obviously intrigued enough and they had the freedom to do what they wanted with their monies that they worked hard for mm-hmm. and they chose to give us an opportunity mm-hmm. and thank you to all of them because for those reasons we exist and we exist today because of customers absolutely and you and and the reason why the customers um, come back to you again and again is because you, you're you're building excellence right I don't know you know, that's, I, what, I, that's what our goal is, is to never, never be complacent and continually push the envelope and not, not try to be mean too. I mean, the problem, like a resto mod, right? Mm-hmm. You're looking at an old car, right? Mm-hmm. It all kind of look the same until you open that hood and see the wiring and the performance engine in there and under, underneath the suspension and brakes. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like what we did with our firearms too, but to get back to when I was saying mm-hmm. with Colt, we did the P4, right? The P4 handguard. That was for a carbine, right? All mm-hmm. the M4. Mm-hmm. Eventually, when we did our piston gun, I couldn't call it an AR-15 or an M16, so I called <laughs> it. I called it the P4-15. Mm-hmm. The P4 rail, mm-hmm. 15 for semi-auto. Mm-hmm. P4 rail doing a full auto. P4, 16 for the M16 full auto. Mm -hmm. So that's how I came up with the nomenclature for our products. So in 2004, we were the first piston driven that was being sold commercially on the market. 
Now, at that same time, there was a famous company doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. They didn't bring it to the market, but they were pushing it to the military called HK, right? Right, 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 right. HK, they, yeah. They had a product called the M4 Enhanced with plastic handguards, and it was a piston-driven, you know, AR or M16, because they were doing full auto, too. Mm -hmm. um, but they called it the M4 Enhanced. Well, guess what? They got into a lawsuit with Colt, and not only that, and why I know about it intimately, Bushmaster was also pulled into the lawsuit, too. Mm -hmm. um, a year and a half later, by the second SHOT Show called 2006, HK came out with the 416. We were already calling our gun the P416. Uh-oh. It was already done, but, yeah. you know, I'm nobody, a no-name or whatever. So you didn't decide to sue them. You didn't get into the suing no. game. No, okay. what am I going to do? We're still yeah. in the garage. Yeah. Probably a lot of people think we're stealing stuff. I have all the proof. You can go to the way yeah. back machine. But listen, I, so first of all, HK makes cool guns, without a doubt. Can't even, like, debate that, right? HK makes cool yeah. guns. But they don't like civilians. <laughs> They only well, believe they only they only want the military contracts. Yeah, well, yeah. that's why that's why all the foreign companies are here because mm -hmm. they they can't even sell their wares to their own people in their mm -hmm. own country, which is ridiculous. Yeah. But that's that's how it's played out here because everyone from around the world is selling their wares here mm -hmm. in this country. Why? Because of freedom, mm -hmm. our individual right of choice. And we happen to have the right to bear arms. And that's why all these companies are here selling their wares. Because they would not survive on selling it to their own country. Because no. they don't. And, yeah. In Germany and all that kind of stuff, HK would have a tough time. So. You know, they'd be making they, AKs. They'd have to make AKs to sell stuff around the rest, <laughs> of, around the rest so, of the world. Which they kind of do. In 2006, the only piston guns at the SHOT Show were for AR style type guns and M16 style guns was HK with their new 416 and POF was there. Mm -hmm. 2017 LWRC rolled into the game. Um, but, but HK changed their name and got out of the lawsuit. They did a, a settlement with Colt and they changed the name and moved on. Bushmaster never did and they fought it to the end and actually won. And why would that be? Because every gun, every receiver there's nomenclature. You know exactly who man, who's the manufacturer of that product, the name of it, or whatever. There's not false advertising here. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what the you know the the judge and the the court case ended up doing was, hey, the nomenclature's right there. There's no misrepresentation of what company it is. Okay. So, so anyways, that's a little story. But we went from that in 2007. We brought out the P308. So that was our first piston-driven 308, like the AR-10 style gun, and that was our biggest, best-selling gun. The bread and butter maker of, of Patriot Ordnance Factory was our 308s for the longest of times. Mm -hmm. One can fight over the little 556 all they want, but when it came to the big powerhouse, the real battle rifle, or Having a cartridge that you can actually really go hunting for every North American game in the country, mm -hmm. 308 does that. And yeah. then eventually, you know, 6.5 Creedmoor came out. Right. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I mean, 308 was, even when I started doing stuff in the gun world here, when I got into this, 308 was the thing, right? Knockdown. It's like 308 and 1911s. Yep. You know? And um, it, still, it still has it. I mean, mm -hmm. the biggest selling cartridge in our country right now is a 9mm. Mm-hmm. Five five six number two, believe it or not. Okay. I think I think the seven six two three oh eight is like number six. Okay. So it's still extreme popular cartridge. I think the forty five is number four. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. 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 So still a big following of mm -hmm. of the thumpers, right? Yeah. So but you know, we have all these new cartridges and two forty three's always been out there, mm -hmm. which is a good hunting cartridge, doesn't kick much. Mm -hmm. The 260's been out there, but it's hard to find it. And the 6.5 Creedmoor is really accelerated. It's a really good, accurate hunting round and an accurate gun for mm -hmm. people playing PRS, even like the 6mm Creedmoor. Those could fit all in our 308 platform. But the P308, and then we brought out ambidextrous features. We did drop-in trigger groups over the years. 
We, in fact, the drop in trigger, we worked with Timony and developed it. Oh, cool. Okay. Timony was like five miles away from our factory. And when you're assembling something, there's seven different parts that go in the thing. And I wanted a cassette that just dropped in. You push the pins, tighten them up, you're done. Mm -hmm. I wanted something simple that was tested outside the gun, you know, outside the receiver, because everything's black. All these parts, the receiver's black, and all the parts are mm -hmm. black. Some it's just bling hard. bling. Well, it's hard to see everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was an idiot that would put a hammer spring in backwards. It would pass tests, mm -hmm. you know, cycle tests. Mm -hmm. But after a couple hundred rounds, you start having like primer strikes. Mm -hmm. Well, I was the idiot that installed it backwards, oh. right? <laughs> and you got okay. to bring it in, you got to mm -hmm. repair it correctly or whatever. Mm -hmm. How do you prevent that? Well, you build something outside and you do the testing outside and then put it in solid in the gun. You yeah. make it quick mm -hmm. because as a process engineer, that's your job. How do you build something quicker, faster, more efficient, retain the quality at always in every step of the process throughout the whole process till it's done? Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's what process engineers do. You find ways of making stuff more efficient. And it's not just about dollars all the time. It's about time. Mm -hmm. Time is money. So if I could do it quicker, faster, more efficient, and I'm repetitively the same from person to person because it's easy to train them, mm -hmm. so you can expand upon assemblies. I'll give you an example. Early on, I was close friends with... Steve Troy, right? Troy mm -hmm. Industries. Mm -hmm. He made a rail system. Marty Daniels, he makes a rail system. Mm -hmm. I tried their rail systems because, you know, hey, they're pretty known in the industry and I'm building a gun. I'll put it on. Well, there's a couple problems. Number one, it was took quite a little bit of time, especially like Marty's with those opposing screws. Mm -hmm. I could do it in about 15 minutes. Well, what if I told you we install our handguards consistently in two minutes? Yeah, that means you can uh, you can do a lot so, more. You can do like seven at the same time. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, how many do I get done mm -hmm. in an hour's time? Mm -hmm. And how many people does it take to keep up to what we do with one person in an yeah. hour? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's all multiplying. <clears throat> you need workspace. You need more manpower. Mm -hmm. So we run lean and mean, and we're extremely efficient because of processes that we put in. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is trade dress. If I put someone else's product on mine, well, then it's not a POF because half that gun is the rail system, isn't it? Uh, yeah. If, if I have a Daniels on the, defense. On the outside, the look of it, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. If I have a Daniels defense rail on my gun, people are going to start associating it as a Daniels defense rifle. Right. And when it's not. Mm -hmm. So I made choices early on to make our own product and to look for ways how to assemble it more efficiently. We also have a heat sink barrel nut because we have plenty of patents. Mm -hmm. We did it in aluminum and have a lot of surface area for dissipating heat. And that's part of our assembly. It's a three inch aluminum barrel nut. Mm -hmm. Aluminum is 18 times, 17, 18 times more efficient at radiating heat. And if you have... 30 to 40 inches of surface area. Well, what does that mean, Hank? Well, it means nothing until you understand that the mil spec steel barrel nut is about nine inches of surface area. Okay. So, so you can't dissipate it over more area. Yeah. Yeah. Do you mm -hmm. have a steel radiator in your vehicle? No, because no. it's not good at radiating yeah. heat. Mm -hmm. So, you think of an AK, it's all steel. What well, it holds that heat? Mm -hmm. That's the one thing Stoner did when he went to lightweight materials that were strong. Mm -hmm. Because he, what was Armalite? Armalite was a subdivision of Fairchild Aerospace. Mm -hmm. They were an aerospace company. So they were dealing with aircraft things. So they were looking for strong, lightweight materials so you don't have all this weight up in the sky and need tremendous amount of horsepower, even more than what was available at the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's Thing. Mm -hmm. So make the airframe as light as you can and as strong as you can, where it had the horsepower of those days where it could get it moving to where you had enough thrust for flight. Mm -hmm. 
it's no different. He used the same type of materials and put him in the firearms. So if we go back into the time frame, could you imagine poor Eugene Stoner going on to a Marine Corps shooting range and an old drill sergeant there looking at that that AR that <laughs> AR ten or his M sixteen and saying, "Get son, get that stupid ass Mattel toy off my goddamn range right now," mm-hmm. because they didn't want to look at it. A man's gun was what a yeah, steel, steel, steel yeah. a steel barrel. Uh, wood stock, you know, all nice that. and that heavy. Done. Yes. Make a good club. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, hey, fought with them. Mm-hmm. I mean, think of the M1 Garand. You know, mm-hmm. it was a heavy gun. It still works today. It was piston driven too, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. An M1 carbine was a little lightweight carbine, piston driven too. And then you still have today, which is still used in the military. I don't know at how much or how heavy it's used, but the M14. Mm-hmm. Right, M1A, classic, beautiful gun, heavy gun, right? Mm-hmm. Steel receiver, steel barrel, wooden stocks. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.